thing i think as we see by very sharp people they need to aspire more creating well country you know why because everybody wants to build software for america so we are all trying to working hard to make america efficient if we have to reach anywhere so we need to invest in making ourselves productive also. hi this is siddhat aluwalia and welcome to the neon show in 1999 our guest was the assistant manager of icici today he is a founding partner of a vc firm that has raised more than 180 million dollars across four funds his firm was also one of the first investors in pioneers like sugar cosmetics and share chat a warm welcome to india questions anand lunia on the neon show i would also like to thank our sponsors prime venture partners for sponsoring the neon show there is this uh, audience of uh, raja beta rani betiya ki <laughs> single child hota hai to this single child uh, he knows ki i can't afford a house so gives up on the house <laughs> Education loan, single child, mostly parents will pay. Ah, yeah. right? So he doesn't bother. Uh-huh. So again, he doesn't demand for cheaper, good quality education. And then what this kid does, his aspirations are very high. Digital life is like mm-hmm. on on steroids. So he sees all these things on reels and mm-hmm. you know social media, wants to replicate. So this kid income may not be very good. I mean, how much does mm-hmm. like you know IT job pay? But he spends all of his money, and then he borrows on credit card. and he spends more and then he asks his parents for gifts or her parents for gifts because credit card worst case parents will bail out hmm. raja beta hai to usko hmm. to bail out mil jayega to mujhe lagta hai ki ye pura na <laughs> raja beta rani beta ka kader aa gaya hai wo <laughs> like under aur kya din jo ek west mein acha culture tha ki 18 saal mein kids become independent jo ab raja beta rani beta ke liye people are still asking money till 30 35 30 35 35 yes absolutely so true which is sort of driving the economy but it's messing up with the whole culture right we, we have a full generation of kids who are dependent hmm. and these kids say ki yeah, theek hai yaar my father has worked hard and the parents say always saved yes yes and india is the only place where parents will go absolutely out of the way hmm. for even the 30 year old kid the they take money away from their retirement to put it in 30 year old kid hmm. to buy a iphone so hmm. <laughs> you us me parents apna retirement touch nahi karte they don't hmm. and they also want the kid to grow up and take responsibility mm. right here we don't have that which uh, so that's why we don't we don't see enough kids in mcdonald's starbucks yes wo kaam hi nahi karte in sab jagahon pe okay parents ka ek to status hi aa jata hai ekdam sahi bol rahe hain ab ab main batata hu aapko raja beta rani beta wala middle class ko chhodiye lower middle class ke andar kids of maids or drivers right they are spoiled they will go to some local some college many of these kids will get a cheap engineering degree now they got a graduation mm. so they will never come back to the blue collar workforce mm. right so the second generation of maid absolute zero conversion to being a maid although maids the reasonably lucrative mm. job right now right nobody wants to do it nobody wants to be a driver also mm. like they they mostly they don't want to even do a to this uh, delivery boy job also all of these kids will hang around search for something or the other you know or afford a cheap job in uh, it services because yeah. it salaries are very low in it services because you know youth supply for that yeah. so they want a white collar life only you like you're saying don't want a blue collar life and they are spoiled even the maids and drivers they also spoil the kids so much right and uh, so yeah we have a full spoiled generation right now uh, for, uh, the dangerous thing is this generation is not saving enough they don't have to know uh, they don't have parents to. are there uh. till 30 there is no behavior of saving mm. and most kids feel that you know i am a single child maybe only two kids mm. so i'll get the house my parents own or i'll get their uh, loan lelta hu papa thoda ho chuka hi denge usme se 
तो क्रेडिट कार्ड बोरिंग में भी उसको दिक्कत नहीं है तो दे डोंट दे सेफ्टी नेट इज अ पेरेंट्स दे डोंट टू सेपरेटली प्रोवाइड एंड होम तो ओके आई स्टे ऑन रेंट राइट नाउ स्लॉग इट आउट बट इवेंचुअली तो पेरेंट्स हैव अ हाउस सो आई एम गुड सो दे फुल फॉर अ इन्वेस्टर और एन ऑन्टरप्रिनर दिस इज अ गुड ऑडियंस बिकॉज दिस देन अगेन लाइक आई सेड अर्लियर द एक्सपेंडिचर पीपल विल डू इज नॉट रिस्ट्रिक्टेड बाई द द इंडिविजुअल्स इनकम इट इज अबाउट द इनकम ऑफ द इंडिविजुअल एंड द पेरेंट्स सो सॉर्ट ऑफ सॉर्ट ऑफ यू नो टू एक्स प्रॉक्सी फॉर एब्सोलूटली टू एक्स प्रॉक्सी विच इज विच इज वाई इफ यू सी स्टार बॉक्स एट अ वेरी हाई बेस ऑफ सम एट हंड्रेड क्रो रुपीज ग्रो इज सेवेंटी वन परसेंट ईयर ऑन ईयर राइट and it's a premium coffee starbucks per cup of coffee is more expensive in dollars than in us also like apparently 10 20% more expensive on a dollar basis not purchasing power parity mm-hmm. pure dollar basis india is expensive and yet it's growing so starbucks ka simple philosophy hai they never trim down their 5 dollar coffee they won't. unki jo 5 dollar us mein 5 dollar australia mein wohi 5 dollar ka replicate karke india mein exactly wohi aa jayega siddharth in some countries like turkey mm-hmm. it is much cheaper Starbucks also, Achha. but in India Damn. there is this spoiled generation. <laughs> <laughs> so they can afford it. Right? Most most other things yeah. like Maharaja Mac or Mac, you are right. Mac is a mass market yeah. thing. Hence, Mac has has to brought bring the prices yeah. down. Right? There is a McDonald index yeah. that works. Starbucks doesn't have an index yeah. because Starbucks is meant for the the affluent spoiled kids who get a free US education, yeah. come back to India and hang out in Starbucks. Right? so same thing i by the way i'll show you like we work so we work has flopped and uh, not necessarily working in uh, us we work here is very popular yeah. because it's an aspirational thing right here kahan kaam kar rahe ho status hai kahan kaam kar rahe ho company doesn't matter but i work in we work right so that aspirational thing about we work starbucks mm-hmm. buying in zara all these things is is what all these kids who go abroad they come back and they want to hang around these brands at the cost of their parents mm-hmm. you know no educational loan so to a, for a founder it's a very interesting opportunity for the country yeah, i think has to be solved yeah. <laughs> so uh, india question has been around 10 years now 11 11 years uh, and it's been a huge change because i was a founder when you for the raised the india question mm. fund one right mm. uh, that time india question check used to be 30 lakhs you it used to be very small yeah 50 lakhs yeah i was there 30 lakhs yeah. because i remember Curify, one of my friends' company, India Question, was one of the first investors. Mother we know there we wanted to put uh, one two crores. Okay. There was no room. <laughs> But yeah, I think we put a small check because there was no room. But yes, the checks used to be average of one crore, two crore. Yes. On the lower side, thirty lakh, fifty lakhs. No, thirty lakh, fifty lakh is where if if I couldn't put. Okay. Uh, for example, share check was a fifty lakh rupee check for ten percent. That was the smallest proper check. Got it. we put 50 lakhs in im jobs also similar 8 7 8% uh but an average check would be um, uh, would be 1 crore 2 crore and today the check sizes are for iq are 8 crores to 15 crores yes it's become like 1 to 2 million same thing same like you know set of people and all yes it's become like that so has the startup inflation grown more than the normal infl- inflation because the same asset you are getting at like almost so very interesting question right i think 10 years ago we didn't know how big outcomes can be and at that time i would have said 2 million dollars at a seed would be too much but in 10 years the country also has changed so yes to a large extent up to a 1 to 2 million seed i think uh, the size of the outcomes potential or certainty of the outcomes has also improved e uh since where we are but the moment you go into a 3 to 5 million seed on a similar kind of idea it sort of gets into an expensive zone right i mean ultimately it's about creating a portfolio and you know ownership and all that so but 1 to 2 million i'm comfortable it it's still so inflation has happened at the pricing but the outcome also is proportionately grown I think the ideal would be like half a million to a million. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> but but there is also. Uh, then, I mean, I wish. Salary. I know with <laughs> with all what we have seen, I would love to be in 2012 again. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. salaries have have gone up. 
कॉम्पिटिशन फॉर डील्स ऑल्सो इज कॉन अप राइट वेरी गुड क्वालिटी यंगर फंड लाइक योर्स हु नाउ कम इन टू द मार्केट नाउ सो अल बिट ऑफ दैट टू हैज बीन देयर यस Hmm. Can you share uh, the the list of IQ fund one, fund two, fund three, and fund four? How big were they, and how many companies each? Sure, had? sure. So first uh, fund was six million dollars, friends and family. Second fund also was friends and family, twenty million dollars. And uh, fund one, uh, fund three was sixty. Fund four is hundred and nine. So fund one was an experimental fund, sure. largely uh, my personal money and friends and family. Uh, we did twenty checks. Average ownership was about nine percent. Okay, and in companies like Sugar, companies like Sugar, where we had a slightly higher ownership, uh, we got about three or four winners. IM Jobs was one, but yeah. low ownership, did and the company also was not a big outcome. Eighty, good outcome. 80 crores, I, I think. Or good outcome, yeah. but low ownership yeah. also. Right? And plus size was not good. Yeah. Although it was a leader in its niche. Yeah. Uh, lending card belongs to my younger brother, yeah. so. I shouldn't even count because it was a two percent ownership. Okay. So while the company has done very well, so we the sad part was that out of the the three four winners we got, and we got a company called Ninety One Mobiles where there was no buyer. Yeah. So the company did a buyback. So Sugar thankfully bailed out the whole fund. Lending card was meaningful, yeah. but low ownership. Uh, I M Jobs was a category leader, but small size of outcome. And Ninety One Mobiles same category leader, but small size yeah. of outcome. so the lesson learned in fund 1 for modeling perspective ki bro you have to have high ownership even ownership right you can't have a fluctuating yes. somewhere 2% somewhere 10% model you decide okay my ownership is 10 it's 15 or it's 5 stick to that across the board second is every outcome has to be a big outcome there is no such thing as a moderate outcome for example if you start aiming for some saas company that 20 million outcome mna and some at 100 million ipo it won't work it won't work because you don't know where your winner is going to be yeah. right and winners one thing we learned again after fund one was winner will be 10% only so two in two or three in portfolio of 20 is like a fantastic performance yeah. fund two similar 20 million but we discovered share chat which again while we diluted because of a small fund and we couldn't put more pro rata uh, started with 10 uh, but that's become like a sizable this thing we put some more money in sugar which is another interesting way of fund modeling yeah. where at least series a occasionally you can take a bet again and then we have two three other there's a company called okter there is fabali so outside share chat the fund will do about 4 5x and with share chat hopefully depending on where we eventually exit share chat at we'll do a double digit okay. multiple on that uh, with about some 40% 50% irr over a sizable period fund 3 we realize that 20 companies on a safe portfolio because fund size became 60 million yeah. so we said let's do more companies and the target was to do 30 35 companies we ended up at about 28 because there was a sort of a bubble period everybody suddenly raised a follow on round so we again <laughs> ran out no, of ran out of profit <laughs> said okay let's stop it uh, and all what happens in a fund modeling i love we love actually investing where you do 30 40 companies in a portfolio yeah. many of them die let them die yeah because eventually number But can of can you hold that double digit equity percentage in 30 40 companies no i can't which is why i want a lot of them to die i don't want everybody to raise series yeah. a right you feel happy that everybody yeah. raise series a yes. because you know <laughs> because yeah. uh you can show to lps yeah. and feel good oh all my companies are, they they don't right 8 10 yeah. years later you know if if uh, law of averages is correct for you and you know you are a good investor you will have uh, three or four winners so why do pro rata in everyone yeah right you'd rather have a uh, portfolio which dies sooner and uh, funnel becomes uh, narrower much sooner in yeah. series a than to say everybody is series a in a bubble everybody is series b everybody goes to unicorn then now they all die yeah. then your pro rata money is like waste you don't even know right uh so yes i i feel that uh, pro rata will be difficult but if you have a 50% graduation rate which is reasonably healthy and uh, you will dilute to probably in india i feel you will dilute to 50 60% of your original shareholding at the time of exit maybe less if founders don't dilute a lot because you can do pro rata two three rounds and then you have to start 
forgetting about Twitter. Those twenty-eight companies, which are the current top three or four companies. So we have about twelve companies, Siddharth, which are past Series B. Okay. Right. Uh, now I know that I won't have twelve winners, right? So yeah. I still know. <laughs> I'm very, very hesitant to say that. Sure. Maybe we'll have five winners instead of uh, three, four that we hoped for. So we have Vyapar, we have uh, Fleetex, we have these two SaaS companies. We have Pagar Book, which is another SaaS company. Web Engage, all these are high ownership yeah. deals for us. Uh, in consumer, we have a company called Friend, yeah. profitable, doing very well. They would do like. Uh, 12 15 million run rate revenue uh, f- pure digital revenue we have kuku fm again phenomenal uh, company uh, we have uh, uh, local hyper local news yeah. again one of a kind competitors are dead you know uh, and uh, then we have some consumer companies like uh, uh, grab house sorry uh, uh, jiva yeah and rapid box Uh, I think I'm missing one or two companies. Uh, in B two B, we have uh, trading. We have a company called Global Fair, okay. which is doing very well, and we have a B two B company called Agrim uh, Wholesale. So this is a list of companies. Some of the younger companies like Clarity is another company which is peer to peer mental health, but peer to peer, they also done very well. Uh, although they are like one of the last companies in Fund Three. So I think all in all. Out of twenty-eight, probably half or more are in the mix right now. Uh, most of them past Series B stage, and uh, bracing myself because I know that house looks rosy, but something will still crack. Uh, if it doesn't, we'll probably have another real great outcome. But uh, it's a sixty million fund, and my modeling says I need only three or four winners because our our ownership is still decent. Ten percent yeah. above in each per company. By and really. large, yes. In a few, we sadly had to dilute yeah. because ran out of money. Uh, but by and large, yes. I, I say, uh, if it was even ten, twelve, I would say we'll be very happy. But in some, we are at fifteen. Some, we are at six, seven. So, yeah. yeah. So, in in fund one, right? It was a six million fund. Yes. And you have returned, uh, I believe, forty million net to the LPs. Let's say, yeah, in Indian rupees equivalent, yes, we have returned. Uh, Six x five point nine x net to the LPs, and this is to just sugar. No, some money came from sugar, some came from lending card, okay. some came from IM jobs, some came from ninety uh, one mobiles. So I would say, however, sugar would be probably like five and a half x, only one and a half x from everything else. Yes, that's true. So there is a power law about who succeeds, yeah. but within that power law. There is another power law. <laughs> okay. There is another power law. So out of your four winners, yeah. one winner will be outsized. And and if you go to any big portfolio, yeah. so Sequoia when they invested in WhatsApp, that vintage WhatsApp outcome will overpower every other winner. Yeah. Uh, so for example, Fund Two is marked up at six x, but uh, so at ten x, but six out of that ten is share chat. So so there is a power law within a power law also. So only like uh, uh, five winners out of twenty. Uh, 20, sorry, about like about out of twenty four or so, but out of those five, one is disproportionate. Uh, that I think will will be true for. Uh, and this is a very power law business, and power law can be like infinite, right? And the power law again, uh, it basically means that to come back to your point about ownership, right? Just imagine there's a power law within power law, yeah. and uh, the company which beats the power law, you have the smallest holding. Then then you are screwed. <laughs> screwed. So there is no hard. point in discovering, right? Yeah. You are you is a vanity logo then. Yeah. So you have one percent in that power law outlier, but it just actually doesn't return money. Yeah. Right? Uh, it may help you uh, maybe sell yourself to some first time fund investors, but uh, for genuine LPs who actually scan through a portfolio, it should shouldn't matter much, and it wouldn't make you wealthy. So same thing, I think. As VCs, we'll uh, you have to have a strategy, and I think our strategy doesn't allow us to chase logos. We need ownership. We are not chasing brands, and you know, many a times, very good quality teams and people we like, we have to let go because of that. It's always good to have like the best founders in your portfolio, right? Yeah. It makes a uh, portfolio looks shine. yeah shine, right? Bright and shiny, yeah. like a rock star. Yeah. Oh my God, how did you get into yeah. this round, right? No, I think uh, that uh, you have to be comfortable with that ignominy of missing out on all the good rounds. 
sitting in the middle of Indira Nagar, yeah. when all this action is taking yeah. right around you, you still have to say no to that. We just said no to a very good founder because, you know. Uh, the expectation was. Uh, and somebody else gave a bigger this thing. Maybe we could have joined with a smaller round, but no, wouldn't. It was not allowing the fund dynamics. And I think there is a slippery slope when you say, oh, I will do as an exception. There is no exception. I mean, then it becomes the norm. And a deal is a deal. It takes away the same attention. Yeah. In, unfortunately, an experimental checks also gives you satisfaction. You have done something. You stay away. It puts the pressure on you. No, dude, <laughs> you haven't done anything. Uh, this 5% ownership or 3% ownership doesn't count for much. So let's not do it. Just don't, don't fool your mind into... Uh, this, uh, I think you were one of the first funds to carve out an experimentation bucket called First Check right out from the start, right? We needed to do that. Uh, I think same reason. Uh, experimentation is important for you to learn. Yeah. So, but we carved it out separately. We didn't want it to... Uh, I still feared sometimes that uh, some of these experimentation, even at an institutional level, a carve out level, can still be distraction uh, unless they're fully independent. So, yes, I think it worked very well. It, it doesn't clutter my uh, fund portfolio. The fund portfolio, the bar of ownership. Also, so that for us, the bar for ownership is driven from another dynamic. So, we are doing small deals. Yeah. In today's age, one million is a small deal. But each partner, each GP does only three deals a year yeah. on an average. So, there are three of us. Maybe uh, some of the VPs will pull in a deal or two. So as a team, we can do 10, 12 deals a year yeah. at most. Usually we do single digit deals in a year. And and each each GP, each partner will say, oh, I have to do only three deals a year. What all do I optimize? I optimize quality, market, everything, pedigree of founder. Or ownership. And ownership, right. You can't skip ownership because you know that you're supposed to do only three. Yeah. You can do four, nobody will complain. You can do 10 for that matter. But you know that if I do only this many deal and, and for 12, 11 years, we, we've known that three, four deals a year per person is the ideal number to maintain discretion. The moment you start doing 10 deals a year, it's sort of, uh, then you can't, can't, uh, uh, can't really maintain the same quality. Your brain is, I mean, yeah. some people are wired like that. Uh, it's easier to do 10 series C deals or series B deals. Yeah. Right? They're more analytical. Gut feel, you know, you to... Uh, so, so to that extent, there's another reason that uh, sometimes you have to actually collectively say, oh, dude, we can't always solve for ownership. So in some companies, we've accepted a single digit, high single digit, because, you know, you can't get stuck also. Sometimes okay, Some companies may be worth, you know, because of the pedigree of the founders and some of those factors. And maybe you hope like hell that you can do a little bit of super brilliant also yeah. sometimes. Right now you, I say you took some bets in SaaS, other categories, right? There you are not optimizing that I want to get in the best companies. There you are also optimizing for care. My ownership criteria should be met. That means you have to be a single fund on the cap table. No. Uh, well, one, we are not single fund. There are other people also there. We, don't like splitting a deal between three people, huh. maximum two funds. Three-way split is very rare for us. Huh. Uh, but I think we're not optimizing. It's all hindsight, right? How do you know that I'm missing the best companies? So my answer to that is being very selective. We have a large team, 10 people investing team, hmm. doing only 10 deals a year. Three partners, two VPs. Yeah. Four partners now, Kanika. Uh, two VPs. Hmm doing only 10 deals a year. So, yes, we let go of many high pedigree founders. Yeah. That we do, or many expensive deals. But because we do very few per person, we'll still maintain... The, the bar is high. Yes. Bar is very high. We So many deals that we have left, mm -hmm. many other funds, peer funds have gone ahead and done. Uh, no, the bar is equally high. Uh, yes, what you can say is some of the like storied deals or fancy deals we let go of mm. because we can't afford. But I think, you know, I mean, we love returning founders. We have done so many of our own returning founders. But there is no guarantee that returning founder Found is a secret to success or top corporate executives are returning, like, you know, or your CXO of a big unicorn. Irrelevant. We have seen so many of so many, 10 yeah. million, 20 million rounds. Hence, hence, I don't feel that pressure 
that I am letting go of a popular deal. Hence, whatever I am doing is not a good deal. Never felt like that. Uh, on the contrary, I think uh, popularity of a deal or credential-driven deal is usually will cloud all your other judgment. So you have to remove credential, and uh, I think value can be created. And, and we sometimes you taken shots in the same space against a credential founder, and uh, our companies have done well. So, for example, if you look at founders of Vyapar, for example, not a credentialed founder, yeah. right? And uh, had enough competition, and you know the companies yes. around Vyapar and all, right? Very high. Amount of funding also, hmm. multiple companies competing with Vyapar. They have all given up the market, right? uh, and Vyapar is still standing. So sometimes, uh, you know, uh, some of these popular, storied, uh, credentialed teams and credentialed ideas is not a guarantee for either product no. market absolutely fit or no. not for scale. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes that you know, particularly when the business needs a three-year, four-year discovery phase for PMF. Hmm. Then being too sought after by investors actually works against you. Hmm. So you know, I I am happy to take a bet saying, okay, this is a good space. This guy is going to open up the market, create awareness, but not have a good product. So can I build invest in a builder yeah. who will do the reverse, while the other person is educating the market? This guy will simply build a good product and find a better product to offer. You can take a bet. Right? We we have done that and it works. Even even Shechet itself, for example, it went through that uh, and uh, did very well. So it's not. I think uh, uh, thankfully India is a large enough country that we don't have to worry that every space will have only one winner. You, know, you, can, you can have two or three in practically every space, every segment. So what I think India Cushion stands out for today after let's say eleven years in talking about external brand hmm. perception that you guys understand consumer really well. That's the perception. Yes, and you are able to spot exceptional companies by first-time founders, right? Not celebrities, by first-time founders. Uh, when I very very early. When I started, I didn't have the money for storied founders, but now of course, I, half of my uh, portfolio is returning founders. Half of it, uh, and uh, like I said, many founders have simply actually sort of given us a India Cushion Premium ownership because. <laughs> Also, because what I promised to them, Siddharth, is that I'll do only three deals a year, and uh, I know I'm taking, giving you a smaller check than what you hope for, but you are very important to me, uh, and also I bring a lot of patience for years and years, which most other funds don't have, and uh, for us being enough for for in the market. We don't have to prove anything to yeah. to LPs, and thankfully, right? We're in a good space, so we actually give a lot of, and we're a small partnership. So it's not like you know I am competing with my other partners to become a more senior MD. Yeah. No competition, also, right? So I am happy to say, okay, dude, here is the money, here is the patience. Let's relax. Let's not do like quarterly reviews of where yeah. we are and when the next round is happening. Let's simply build, uh, and people love working with us for that. Uh, To come back to our consumer part, right? I think particularly consumer needs a fresh perspective. Consumer businesses are not built by a playbook. Maybe some businesses, for example, starting a credit card company, there a, a person who's done a credit card business yeah. has an advantage. Maybe the complex business and but consumer businesses usually uh, thankfully don't need domain expertise and but uh, thinking of a different thing is like you know people need to be bold the younger people are much bolder but there are some areas where we have gone adjacent to consumer which look like b2b for example vyapar and that was, i was coming to another thesis right so nobody had a thesis for b2b saas for smes in india and you had this No, so, the only fund that had the thesis. Siddharth, we'll hopefully like companies. other companies are coming around. When I started the fund, I had only one major thesis, two major thesis. Sorry, one major thesis was content in Indian languages, and we'll say we'll do ten, twenty, thirty companies over ten years, right? and we played that. We have the biggest portfolio of content yeah. companies: Sharechat and Cuckoo FM and Local and Friend and 
you know these are like some of the yeah, good outcomes i think there are 36 other names that nobody knows about nobody knows about and we have many we are adding <laughs> we hopefully if all goes well we'll do yet another uh, company okay. in this era we'll do another in the same space uh, then we said we'll do fintech right and uh, we tried a few things payments we couldn't do much we did a few lending we got some success but then we said okay what's our next thesis right uh, and suddenly our experience with consumer our experience with lending we realized that the smb saas and the decision makers for small businesses medium businesses uh, particularly where the owners decide yeah right that the behavior also has changed there now at a micro level people were willing to buy software they're already buying prime tv they're buying hotstar they're fully leading a fully digital life so b2c saas is already in play you are saying yes for them they personal life ka saas is there already right so they will of course want the same convenience in their business also the other good part is that there is a government push their government shocks like gst is a shock yeah uh, the the demonetization is a shock covid is a shock and i said okay this guy is already open plus there is a shock therapy sadly going on in that market yeah. economic cycles are shocks there so i said every shock will lead to more and more adoption of software people are already willing already comfortable and we said can we extend this thesis into businesses and that's working out very well we said okay now now look at a macro perspective this is micro behavior level at a macro level if india has to be the third largest economy in the world yeah america is a developed country you know why because everybody wants to build software for america yeah the whole world us people in israel eastern europe you know china sells sends cheap goods so we are all trying to working hard to make america efficient american companies should have a lot of software should be very productive and the whole world is helping america become productive yeah. right? hence they are a developed country because every all of us are working to make them productive if we have to reach anywhere we need to invest in making ourselves productive yeah. also now indian companies thought originally 20 years ago or 10 years ago that they will become productive by consuming american software yeah it won't work too expensive hmm. sales force 150 dollars a month It's too expensive. You know yeah. the numbers, sir. Yeah. See that we just can't afford. Our our income levels are so low. Yeah. So even when businesses want to adopt software, the biggest challenge is cost today. And American, see, software you can't reduce price. Facebook can come to India because it's a free software. Yeah. Microsoft uh, can't really say, "Oh, I'll reduce my cost by 10x to yeah. be affordable to Indian." They have to. It's international pricing. That leaves a room for Indian companies. and i am seeing at a macro level forget india and my thesis when i started i was looking at india i quickly realized with some of the company like webengage uh, and even pagar book went to bangladesh's beton book and we'll, okay. we'll go back again there we really, really think that there's a good market there uh, rest of the world southeast asia similar income levels vietnam bangladesh yeah. philippines africa even lower income levels right latin america similar income levels all of these countries can't afford the expensive silicon valley yeah. prices right maybe japan can maybe europe can yeah. south korea can other countries can't afford so everybody in the world as a digitize needs cheaper software now talent pool dekho where is the talent pool for for building this cheaper software also india similar. is the only country yeah. thankfully we also have a large domestic base so i feel that next 20 years the whole rest of the world the world which is not in the developed countries yeah. will be digitized by india the developed countries will be digitized by america granted the next wave is ours because we are the only talent pool yeah. uh, and i see that then now you define like this now we have 20 years of work right we have to be healthy now so <laughs> we need a long long job to do so that's the way i am thinking of thesis and and this realization for us actually opened up our minds we we should not see that oh will indian companies do 100 million revenue why should i not do a india to us because it's easier to do 100 million revenue there i agree with you but the companies i build here in india will be category leaders even a 50 million 100 million revenue company will be number 1 vyapar yeah. will be number 2 company probably maybe number 1 it might pip tally at some point pagarbu can become number 1 freetex can become is number 1 Uh, automation software in india right web engage can become like a top two software companies in india we will have category leaders 
प्लस आफ्टर टेन ईयर्स दे विल बी इन अ ग्रोइंग एंड लार्ज मार्केट ग्लोबली एज अगेंस्ट मेकिंग सॉफ्टवेयर फॉर द अमेरिकन इकोनॉमी विच वी डोंट नो वेर इट्स गोइंग इन द नेक्स्ट फाइव ईयर्स है सो आई फील दैट येस टूडे फॉर एन ऑन्टरप्रनर मे बी द अमेरिकन अपॉर्चुनिटी यू नो इमीजिएटली साउंड्स इन द नियर टर्म रेवेन्यू प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व ईजियर बट इफ आई टेक अ ट्वेंटी ईयर व्यू आई थिंक इंडिया मे नॉट बी अ वेरी बिग कंज्यूमर ऑफ सॉफ्टवेयर टूडे बट वेन विल एग्जिट दीज कंपनीज टेन ईयर्स इंडिया माइट एक्चुअली बी अ वेरी लार्ज कंज्यूमर एंड द टाइमिंग विल फॉर एग्जिट विल बी फेंटेस्टिक एंड टाइमिंग फॉर एंट्री इज ग्रेट बिकॉज नो बडी इज फोकसिंग आई एम लविंग इट आई कांट हैव इनफ यू हैव आई थिंक टेन बी टू बी सास फॉर एस एम ईज एंड कांट हैव इनफ वॉट आर द अदर सीज इज लाइक शुगर एंड यू आर योर लार्ज डी टू सी portfolio now Good what was the thesis there uh d2c brands we have always said that in india we need large categories and usually category creators so sugar created the category of color cosmetics color cosmetics you know in india lipstick used to be only an evening party thing yeah but because we invested in social media we had a company called roposo if you remember yeah. instagram sort of came in into india in the 2011, 12, 13, 14 kind of era, right? Yeah. So Instagram suddenly changed the need of a lipstick. Lipstick was not for going out in the evening. Lipstick was like a throughout the day. Throughout the day, and you had to change the shades, and you could end up clicking a picture anywhere, and uh, that changed the way lipstick was perceived. You you would wear a bold color in the office. It sort of became an expression of yeah. you know your identity or or your being a woman. and suddenly and then there was a similar culture we saw in korea and singapore and all like all sorts of colors right? it was no longer like the which shade of pink are you using yeah. right and that is said okay sugar was the first company to capture that whole wave and ride it and create that whole category of course there were a few others but we connected the best with the audience uh jiva for example is creating a silver jewelry category so what happened is that was that we like precious jewelry as a country and we see it as both as a store of value and uh, ornament right yeah. uh, to show our prosperity wealth and all of that between 2000 i think i'd say 2015 16 to 2019 gold prices sort of doubled yeah okay gold was already expensive we already spoken about uh, white collar salaries are not increasing yeah. right tech salaries are flat for last 20 years yeah. so suddenly the affordability of gold goes out of the whack incomes are not increasing at the rate of gold the recent years and a lot of underlying money prefer precious jewelry was moving to silver yeah and that was the big macro thesis and suddenly when you go and see oh my god the country doesn't have a single silver jewelry brand at all we don't have it and uh, phenomenal i mean we were able to go that's like the one of the fastest company uh, in d2c brands they're like almost uh, some 25 30 crores of revenue monthly monthly net revenue right uh, offline and online of online there's a problem and we'll talk about that also why you know monopoly of google and facebook is growing the d2c brand space in india but uh, but offline we could go uh, slightly expensive to go but we went and we capture we, uh, that that silver jewelry can become a 10000 crore rupee brand we, we are not so we feel that we we would probably have brands which can do like a few thousand crore revenue at least a thousand crore revenue and hence we have done fewer you have done mostly these two are notable i don't know about the other we have done a company called rapid box okay which is bringing the flavor of sneakers but under 1000 rupees so sneakers are expensive and the younger generation wants yeah. to wear sneakers rapid box are great sneakers this guy couldn't solve for importing so he actually started building his own sneakers and uh, but under 1000 rupees uh it's a big market again market can be like thousands of crore yeah. rupees so we said the bar for outcome and we spoke about it right for a d2c brand to sit in the portfolio has to compete with a sugar sorry compete with a lending cart or compete with a share chart in outcome yeah hence the revenue required was 1000 crores has to be <laughs> and there are few i feel that i was last 4 5 years i was skeptical about the size of outcomes of many of these premium brands but we just spoke about the raja beta rani beta phenomenon yeah. and i say that now i feel you know increasingly 
that maybe we should stop worrying about the per capita income i think the the purchasing power of these kids is much higher than their income yeah so maybe there is you know because iphone is the fastest growing phone in the country and it keeps becoming expensive we pay double whammy dollar rate problem plus yeah. <laughs> plus iphone keeps becoming expensive but it's still the fastest growing yeah. so i feel maybe if you take a 10 year view maybe there is room for some premium brands also luxury brands created Looks in like out of india like out of for india. essential for example yes you know and some of these brands were stuck for a little bit but suddenly as people stopped buying houses everything they own is disposable yeah and suddenly the disposable income is like doubled or tripled in the last 3 4 years people just don't buy an apartment now and that's like you know or people don't marry so no obligation people are marrying in their 30s now yeah. so suddenly the disposable income is large right? at least in the short run so i think we have an opportunity of creating premium brands also i can give an example of a company called mokobara they just off- they have a showroom below our office right yeah. uh it's so popular yeah. and you see mokobara everywhere you know and, and ash tilani some a great friend of mine he invested i was skeptical 3 years ago about mokobara and wow. today like okay wow looks like a uh, they are again touching like 30 crores in yes but it right. looks like a great pick because yeah. suddenly you know indian kids want to own a tumi yeah. and uh, this is the closest they can get to you know uh, to that so there's an aspirational value and i think kids will go outside their budgets to buy some of these thing which can show right so vanity and luxury uh i think in india it's less of luxury more of vanity so <laughs> so we have covered four theses of yours right the first was content where you went let's say i'll back as many as possible content startups creating local content from india yes content or social behavior content or social behavior from india because it's a very large population 1.4 complex population yes and it has uh, enough variations and uh, it will most cases it will not be possible for global giants to yes, and i think and and facebook will not be able to and they are also corporate companies now yeah. and i think innovation will keep keep happening just imagine 1.4 billion consumers we don't know we haven't seen it looks like we've seen the last of the social ideas yeah. but we might have a new idea on yeah. social media it will keep coming uh, we spoke about uh, b2b b2b saas created yes. for smes we Why? spoke about fintech the yes. the lending portfolio that you have and the last we spoke about d2c any other thesis that we have Mr where you are big believers in B2B I believe in platforms also besides software right same behavior right people are willing to transact small businesses small large business. number of small businesses willing to transact yeah, with each other you you if you can bring a large number of businesses under one platform and the same behavior they show in terms of buying software will be in buying other things online right or or selling online uh fintech I believe is a bigger bucket than lending or successes have come only in lending yeah. uh but i feel that a lot more has to be done there is enough happening there is a lot of creative energy in traditional businesses like bajaj uh, or in uh, entrepreneurs in the consumer side of credit cards and you know variety of yeah. ways of lending uh, or payments uh, very cre- uh, creative ways of solving those problems i am now focusing on the b2b part of fintech you know we've had a few like razor pay but i think the b2b rails uh are yet to be built in many areas now and uh, for example there is this very little known company called iex indian energy exchange yeah. right the phenomenal company and focuses on a very niche segment of uh, trading of power yeah. uh, monopoly uh, profitable and uh, very highly valued so i think there will be niches like those uh, we we are hoping to capture some of those niches right for example trading for for uh, mass market is one piece uh zero dha etc but there will be other use cases in those segments which are b2b and enterprise yeah. you know, and we can we're looking forward to those uh it's the, the some of these are not uh, as easily describable because they are complex domain cases but mentally you have to be open saying that india is going to be a large economy uh for example in fintech infra the revenues look low right now but fintech infra is emerging like a good space for multiple companies to be created and earlier we used to think that no 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 only only us or west will have these companies yeah. we can have many in india also and how what's your research process like for understanding the 1.4 billion population because this has been ongoing for the last 11 years right where do you draw your insights from 
from my existing portfolio companies you know very grateful to the founders uh, talking to people like you this is insight for me because every by every time i am forced to answer something you have to think uh, the questions are very insightful i always love uh, when you you face a question uh, we we have set up ourselves for a perpetual research machine so we we are not really worried about putting a precise number to something it's irrelevant in large country and we can only do what india can achieve right so if indian economy is capped outcomes are capped so be it i'll raise a smaller fund yeah so we we're not worrying about size of the market we're focusing on the insights of the market what's the angle right and hence you keep talking we sit if you come to our office we sit in a den space like this around the table uh, it's like a treasury bench everybody talks to everybody people want to do some personal work you then you go in a corner it's not a people sit into their cabins and we sit in the open we go to cabins to talk right? yeah so what you are arguing or debating all day about is a good market bad market you know what is working let's look at some underlying behaviors relatable for example i spoke about you know what's happening with the raja beta phenomenon so the moment you get that concept there then all the market about luxury brands and you know you know the 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 family ceo then becoming the business ceo because running the business also yeah. all so once you have that fundamental level clear right we have to align our insights and our our ideas and businesses to such underlying cultural wave i'll give another example of another insight and you know so we just discuss problems here what's going on like you know everybody has a maid problem everybody has a driver problem yeah why is it happening kids are going to schools they don't want to come back and work as a maid and yeah. driver it's good for them but what is it doing to the rest of the economy it's becoming increasingly expensive to hire a maid yeah. so what are people doing cooks are expensive they order from zomato we are seeing that drivers are expensive so most people are now doing car pooling yeah. uber and all because it's really now we are like america yeah. only the rich can afford a full time nanny full time cook and a driver yeah. that will be like real privilege thing to already today right 10 years later it will be unaffordable unless you're super rich yeah. you, you will not have it's any such thing so that suddenly changes what's happening on one end what's happening to the household so suddenly for example we'll need uh, more uh, consumer durables now as a vc i don't know if i can capture but one thing is for sure every house will need a dishwasher yeah everybody will need a good quality machine and machine and a dryer like this dryer like this right because you are doing it yourself yeah. right so suddenly houses will have to be designed differently and uh, so you can see like if a public market this thesis will play out very well for next 20 years yeah. the beauty of this again if you discuss government reforms this problem of labor for household work is even more acute in smaller towns and smaller cities so those small towns and cities also will do a lot of consumer durables so how a washing machine should actually be in a village also because a village can barely find labor for farm work yeah. so so for laundry of course you <laughs> villages also will find yeah. now it was not feasible so far so what's also happening in india villages also are getting good quality power supply now the power has changed the dynamic so that one reason people used to say ki indians don't adopt software don't adopt hardware are bro power hi nahi hai jab when you don't try chalega is pe how can you do digital yeah, payments yeah. when your phone is not, not charged right charge. i think power situation yeah. is i would say the most underrated we don't celebrate it enough mm. because all of this digital economy you know tiktok and share chat will be irrelevant because the the poor fellow doesn't have charge in his phone right all the broadband in the world is useless without power yeah. and we've got it only recently right and which is why we're seeing the effects of that so if there is enough power in a village home they all do consumer durables uh, they'll be able to use software accounting software can then be on cloud cloud software is synonymous with power right when it goes hand yeah. in hand right so all of these things i'd say that you know you keep discussing about these things right i mean of course uh, uh, i wish i was sharing a lot of the <laughs> very happy to share but the idea is that this is what you discuss you don't discuss oh, who's for investing where and who's got a unicorn all that is you to trust the process if you spent 10 11 years you got a few winners you know that you to trust only the input rest is frankly all this value add and all is also yeah. like secondary you have to just go behind the right trend right team business model also will discover distribution will discover but these two things the insight about the tailwind of the market and what is the founder market fit right 
so who is the right founder for this market if the founder is somebody like vyapar who really appreciates understands who the buyer of the software is yeah. has empathy is happy to devote his life so for example in lending card they are giving 5 lakh rupee loans to a small businessman this is the only product 3 year 5 lakh rupee loan is the only product they have done for last 9 years they have done nothing else they have done they have not, not thought of bnpl never thought of a personal loan never thought of a bigger loan no working able financing nothing you have to love your segment to dedicate rest of your life yeah. to solving the need of only one segment yeah. right there is so much of money so much of distraction yes. for most of these companies right for share chat to say yeah maybe there is english language content there is ott but i want to serve the people who are non english and i connect with them and that is what i will solve even if there is a tiktok opportunity in english yeah. or for the tier 1 audience they didn't do it unless they, till they got the opportunity right so they dedicated their life and which is why founder market fit is very important right you get founders who sort of are coming because there's an opportunity and say i want to capitalize my talent and uh, i'm happy to capitalize it wherever it's possible those founders can't dedicate it long enough to solving one problem and saying okay this is what i stand for so founder market fit uh and the market insight we discussed both and i think the insight in the founder and you know what kind of founders are appropriate and what went goes wrong which is why uh we we sort of you know, uh discuss uh, we, we usually our guests sit behind a behind a double glazed glass because they can't listen to what we're talking yeah. <laughs> there is real uh non political stuff a uh, politically incorrect stuff going on discussion about founders and and teams and yeah in fact i would say there is a investor market fit also so it's also important if the company is doing well uh who's the next investor so for for example some of the company like uh, lending cart you now did not have a traditional tier 1 vc because they didn't really understand yeah. the market but mayfield and sama understood that market uh the phenomenal early, early investors for us share chat again elevation and light speed were phenomenal early investors because they understand the market the partners great insights to the market so i think investor market fit also is another thing which you have to research and uh, find out if you are lucky of course it's not like always i can't choose but given given a choice at least i'll have priority of okay who's the right yeah. guy for this series a or series b and coming from one more insight is right how you are able to discover these companies so early like kuku fm you were the first check 2 crores or 10 crores valuation <laughs> okay valuation of course you know i like i said some of the founders have been very good to us yeah. kuku fm founders were close friends of gagan okay and they allowed us a you know very good price for that round because they wanted to work with us uh, uh, really grateful to them but uh, yeah i mean let's i think let's forget the price let's just go to discovering this very very early same if i am not early i am not relevant put the other way for me being early is an existential problem right i mean after the space is discovered so now everybody knows neo banks right yeah. people have been investing in neo banks even till today yeah. right even now we've got still getting cross border neo banks and yeah. what not right credit cards maybe there is room for two three more all we know i have no role to play there markets are discovered already i mean like you know my half a million is like a or 1 million is a like a knife to a gunfight right. right so i have to be very early i can't be 3 years early because my companies will die before yeah. <laughs> but i have to be at least 2 to 3 years early before the market is uh, otherwise i have no reason to exist right i probably then should should work for a series b fund or series a fund larger fund hopefully somebody will give me a job we we can survive only if we find out these new waves new things a year two years ahead of the market and that's why when you asked me earlier that you know uh, are you dropping your quality no i am simply taking more risk on the market uh, i'm able to get the best of the founders and uh, also there is a natural selection positive selection when a founder is comfortable in his skin to think 3 years ahead of the market oh this market will become large today it isn't large yeah. but i am happy to take a risk that itself tells you a lot about the founder right i mean today's market somebody comes and says 
oh by the way i want to build a social network I'm just imagine yeah. like, who's ready to do it right? <laughs> everybody was ready to build a social network in may 2020 yeah. and now all of them have gone their own way right but today if somebody comes say oh no i still find one problem which is not solved <laughs> it'll be good to see yeah. and and uh, there is no funding available for those yeah. kind of things so being a little bit uh, ahead of time a little bit contrarian also gives you the automatically access to better quality founders yeah. right? whereas if i want to fund the next credit card company i mean like you know the founders will be today founders will be mercenaries yeah. you know because they see an opportunity and they'll be good quality but the investors will be like you know 20 million 30 million table stakes there i have no role to play there so we we are we have solved it wasn't like this earlier right earlier the thesis were, we had a thesis when i was madhukar and i were both investors earlier but we we initially had some hypothesis but we realized that perpetually staying ahead in terms of thesis which is why i what i spoke about you know rest of the world i have to be able to take a bolder look at how the world will be uh, for example ai right now the ai wave how the world is saying is that ai wave is there we have to build the picks and shovels for yeah. adopting chat gpt is the final product maybe there will be some indian version and all sure. that but build the picks and shovels how to adopt ai and how to implement the llms and how to integrate and how to produce a specific output yeah. specific sector vertical right that's how people are playing ai i am seeing the ai the different way India, rest of the world still has a very serious software adoption problem. Yeah. Better in consumer software. I mean, just imagine Microsoft Word is so complex. I can bet you that eighty percent of the country or world cannot use even the basic features of Word, yeah. Excel, PowerPoint. Right. They just know how to type in it. They know how to type in it. That's all, right? That's all. Nothing more. Uh, but I am saying now that AI is here, can AI? Re- remove the adoption gap or usability gap where developed country people who learned these softwares from childhood they are adept but people who are not from developed countries people who are suddenly exposed to internet wave all over the world they now need to adopt software the problem for example we have in softwares like pagar book and vyapar and all right i mean like configuring your software to change the payroll logic every month is going to be complex right i mean you don't have a tech support and it support and these are first time users they use basic consumer yeah. apps can ai remove that right can we remove the button driven memory driven interface complex interface in a software right can we remove it with ai right i mean uh, why do we need to have drop down buttons yeah. because that i believe drop down buttons or for example logical search strings right you given google to somebody bro i mean like you know writing a good google search is actually something you acquire work yeah. right i mean just it's natural for you yeah. and i oh you want to know what time is this train they have to type the train number train time stations and then you have to be able to smart enough to surf the results also right yeah. hopefully ai can solve the problem better because ai should then know what ticket you bought recently and what yeah. timing is coming and solve the problem for you the context can be given and and the voice commands can become smarter and i think some of these thing that we've been taken granted for for consumer knowledge behavior yeah. simple thing that we take so everybody should have an email no people don't have yeah. an email right so i think ai i would rather say the adoption of ai to remove the barrier of software adoption and i think it'll again open up a market because 80% of the world is not using business software yeah. i mean even b2b sales platforms you know the fact that the guy has to go punch in a few numbers select he'll be shit scared hopefully ai as a layer will eliminate all of that adoption risk and you know variety of risk that yeah. this guy is going through so i would rather play ai that way you know uh helping and, teach software to the rest of the world adoption yeah. of software adoption, adoption, of software. adoption of software uh because i don't think sitting in india uh i have an edge in playing the global ai global ai boom yeah i don't think so i would love to i wish i wasn't here i was there but i am where i am yeah. and uh, i still want to be ahead of uh, you know uh, the adoption curve so i am still hoping to use that in in the areas where we are already present in in the markets we are present in i wouldn't chase saying oh, suddenly i start doing uh, silicon valley quasi indian nri indian AIDs. or indian kids going abroad 
I don't want to fund them. Yeah. I mean, that's I may fund one or two because I know them so well, but uh, that's, that's not, not the your business. DNA. No, it it won't be, and that my portfolio won't be full of that. So yeah, you can't pick a theme of the 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 month and then say, okay, oh, this is working, so let's build a portfolio of that. Uh, some funds have the muscle and the money to do it, not us. Another uh, interesting fact is that uh, you know you have kept your ownership requirements very high. which is required for fund modeling can you explain that why is required for fund modeling that kind of ownership so let's say i don't know which company will do well yes let's say okay but we all know that if i do 20 companies in a fund and what is the current fund size current fund size is 100 million yeah so i plan to do around 40 companies in that okay 30 to 40 companies three to four companies will do well all of these 3 to 4 companies will largely drive the total outcome yeah and the rest of them will be even maybe i'll make some money but to return a 100 million fund by four times which is conservative target i target five times gross to return four times net to the investors i have to return 500 million dollars yes. these three four deals have to amongst themselves return 500 million dollars so let's say each deal has to give about 150 million to 125 million each deal has yes. to give back right now if i start with a 15% ownership which i normally do right now we put some more money but by, towards the end will dilute maybe at the time of exit i'll own somewhere between 5 to 10% yes that means to get 100 million dollars back from this one company the company has to be worth 2 billion 3 billion 4 billion which is like a big winner in yeah. india right i mean even companies like uh, nike ptm zomato they have still remained in even by and large in a single digit billion yeah. outcome and these are horizontals they're not a lot of them most other unicorns also are in the 1 or 2 billion range only yeah. right? a very rare outcome like a flipkart so my winner great winner has to give me 100 million dollars yeah the which is why if i don't have ownership you know i have 3% of ownership and which i i sort of have in one of my company share chat because there we couldn't do enough pro rata and the company diluted a lot yeah uh, in the later stages we are left with 3% ownership and you took an exit partial exit we did yeah we did but 3% ownership worked for a 20 million fund which it yeah. came from you know we, we kept diluting but for a 100 million fund if i don't have you know 5% 10% ownership yeah. so i have to start with a higher ownership there is no other model you have to basically think of a fund returner your expectation from each and every company has to be it will return one of the fund one x of the fund so you for example yeah. if you are running a smaller fund you can afford to take less equity yeah which actually is a good advantage for you you know i lose deals simply because so <laughs> they can't give 18 they can't give they can't give because you know there are other people who are committing yeah. we're competing for the deal yeah. you know but you can squeeze into a company a fund and say okay i'll take 5% right yeah. it'll work for you that's the curse yeah. of running a slightly larger fund uh and and uh, but you have to solve for that curse right you start buying logos and many a times you say oh somebody else is leading the round can i put like you know i mean if i have beg enough people like kunal in their seed yeah. round or jupiter jitendra gupta yeah. so many good founders who are raising 15 20 yeah. 25 in their seed rounds i go with my 1 million 2 million there yeah. <laughs> i'll get 3% yeah. it's a good logo collection yeah but even when these companies are successful it will be irrelevant for me so you will have 1% that let's say a large outcome 1% or large outcome which will mean that you know let's say the large outcome is 5 billion dollars i still get 50 million only and there will be so many people competing for that 1% because you are not the alone one who wants to exit i agree and and let's say exit is a separate solution i have four companies which are 1% ownership 2% ownership yeah i get 20 30 50 million from each four winners so i have four good winners all of them are big unicorns but all i collect is 200 million dollars on a base of 100 yeah it just won't won't move the needle right uh, so you have to have high ownership and uh, i agree it's a tricky situation yes but i don't see any which is why the only discipline is to say no 
एंड नॉट वरी अबाउट कलेक्टिंग लोगोज वी यू सेड नो टू वेरी गुड कंपनीज वेरी रिलेक्टेंटली फॉर एग्जाम्पल वन ऑफ द कंपनीज दैट आई रियली मिस्ड वॉज एम पी एल ओके साई वी हेड फंडेड इज प्रीवियस कंपनी विच वन वॉज दैट दिस क्रियो द हार्डवेयर फोन स्मार्ट फोन राइट एंड he came back and he raised a 5 million round now of course there was b next there was sequoia yeah. sequoia was leading the round and we had very little allocation in that i had i still love sai what he's yeah. been able to do but ownership was so low that we did the math and realized that uh, it just won't solve the fund returning problem and we stayed away from there and like farid and bhanu are starting another company hmm. so i believe they'll get equally high valuation let's right? above 20 million Yes, occasionally, some founders like Farid and Bhano are very generous yeah. as returning founders to small funds like us, and uh, we are hoping to do some of these deals. Uh, Farid has been exceptionally generous. Farid and Bhano, uh, now of Pep dot Live, has been exceptionally generous to give us good ownership. Masai, uh, yeah, Pratik, Pratik has been ex- exceptionally generous with us. and some of these founders you know we really uh, uh blessed that they were actually given back to us uh and we have decent ownership and and we are you know uh disproportionate compared to the size of our funds there so how do you balance between uh the founder expectation that hey diluting more for me is causing the company harm in the long run because large vcs might Say your company is already diluted forty percent by the time you hit a series A. No, we don't. We you are right, Siddharth. I we haven't done a single deal uh, where we have taken more than twenty. We never take. We will restrict our ownership to uh, teens. But do you feel the com- because it's very uh, highly unlikely by the time the company hits a series A, they would have raised couple or even three rounds. Well, it's very hard. that's the current phenomenon you are right yeah. right we have bridge upon bridge upon <laughs> <laughs> right? seed seed yes, seed yes, plus yeah. seed I plus i think it's plus just like pre seed series a yeah so <laughs> basically the number of rounds i think to some extent it's also that founders don't know one of the things that you know i like to work with founders okay what do you have to prove yeah. right uh and what your proof for next round has to depend on the market environment right yeah uh what founders are used to is spending money on cac yeah. and showing growth in lieu of pmf yeah. right or anything else uh what investors today want is great margins large market yeah. some early signs of pmf early signs of leadership and they don't care about growth so i think uh, this iterative process of what do i need to prove uh that becomes very long it takes 4 5 years and you dilute in rounds it's a sad story i think uh, after the first seed round everybody around the board has to first say that let's buy 3 years of time burning your seed round in 12 months itself yeah. is a mistake right it's taking that long and then not chase growth immediately chase proof of a large market you know chase for some kind of a pull from the customer uh slower process and uh, founders have to value their equity uh I would blame not the VCs here. Uh, I'd blame the founders because they have sought lot of validation and uh, street cred from peers by raising round upon round. Right? It's not about how much you own of your company, how much you raise. So founders, particularly the tech bro founders, yeah, they don't have a wealth creation mindset. You know, they are not saying I have to I have to increase my wealth. so it's not a wealth optimization problem ki how much am i diluting versus how much i own you know if i don't raise money what am i letting go of versus ownership they're simply saying oh i don't care about dilution i'll keep raising because you know everybody else around me is raising that and race amongst tech bros is the is the reason and they forget one x liquidation preference at the time of exit oh absolutely <laughs> they, i think you're right i mean liquidation stack and fact that every large round yeah put so much of undue pressure founder has to know in his heart and usually know that they don't have pmf investors are simply speculating you know investors are hoping sometimes they are desperate to invest that pmf will be arrived 
सो फाउंडर आफ्टर एवरी राउंड हैज टू स्पेंड मनी बिकॉज इज ऑलरेडी प्रॉमिस टू एवरीबडी की आई हैव पी एम एफ ऑलरेडी राइट बट थ्री फोर राउंड ऑफ मनी यू स्पेंड विदाउट हैविंग पी एम एफ एंड देन इफ यू सीन सो मेनी ऑफ द यूनिकॉन्स दे आर फाइंडिंग पी एम एफ आफ्टर यूनिकॉन is coming after pmf after pmf right so we <laughs> and uh, sadly many of the companies i am seeing now who actually were able to discover pmf but have no money to grow because they are a unicorn and too expensive for anyone to invest in too expensive or people just lost interest yeah. and but the founder finally found pmf right so so i think founders to some extent have to be greedy and there i feel that this culture we used to have around you know this business class family business where people wanted to create wealth yeah and not just name and fame right it's nobody cares about like you know how much pr you have and what people think it's what your wealth is that counts i think some of these young tech bro founders were very qualified very sharp people they need to they need to aspire about creating wealth right i, I would say that we index unnecessary saying of you want to change the world founders basically say changing the world means raising a lot of money but i think uh, your founder is greedy and ambitious saying no 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 i want to make a lot of wealth for myself wealth for top 100 employees in my company and for yes. myself and then optimizing wealth is what they have to solve for yeah. but i think the society in general or culture despises wealth <laughs> despises wealth because they have seen too much of young angry amitabh bachchan <laughs> yes so that <laughs> is so true so so and you also don't want to be like that traditional businessman yeah. who is accumulating wealth right yeah. you feel that what i am spending with my high burn you feel you're giving away yeah. back you're not giving away you're <laughs> frittering away the wealth of your employees also yeah. for that matter right and of your shareholders and your own so many unicorn founders all they have achieved is maybe a 2 million 5 million 10 million secondary exit yeah. and they have nothing else to show for it now that is nothing i mean most people good qualified people make more than that in a esop of a yeah. uh, of a of a large let's say uh, of a fang india mart kind of or a fang also a they fang. make more money yeah. than that right so that's a lost opportunity uh, i think uh, that uh, i think i'd blame it on founders i'll uh, and founders are like that because of the culture i think media for example media should be publishing the top 100 richest founders of india who have created wealth for themselves real wealth instead we make a list of unicorn founders yeah. there's such a big gap between the two right so i think media is selling whatever get gets them the clickbaits and india media has been designed like, even if you see aaj tak on any news channel so that will get a clickbait in richest founders of india also i feel because frankly if we let's start deciding top 10 founders of india tech founders who are richest yeah it's a complex mathematics yes. like you said <laughs> ownership into yeah. preference tag into, you know i think will uh, it will be a very interesting exercise and then suddenly wealth creation will be in spotlight you mentioned india mart yeah. now that's wealth creation 50% ownership of a company yeah. you know uh, and probably india mart founders looks like they are richer than ptm founder okay. right <laughs> so, both are great founders yeah. but then you know wealth creation uh, one trumps the other and both of these founders are better than a zomato founder which is probably the largest out of the yeah. three companies so i think it will be interesting to make a list of those even look at flipkart founders right uh, flipkart is much 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 bigger company yeah and you will find a map my india or a india mart kind of a listed map company map my india today founder would be i think as equal as richard bini bansal because he that's the he point. owns the company 100% and the company is that's the now. point uh, i think it's not 100% but a sizable yeah. majority ownership and that's the point right and uh, i think we need to celebrate those lists yeah. right and the advantage is that these the, the kind of uh, continuity the sad part is if you dilute too much you can't really ride the whole most of the unicorn founders then sort of get off yeah. very few have gone to ipo they lose control of the company mna or they have external yeah. ceo so you know that after you become a unicorn let's say and let's say you are in a high growth market you multiply for 20 years for 20% that's about 38 times of growth 20 years 20% yeah. so 
you can multiply your wealth and your shareholder wealth by f- about 40 times in next 20 years but only if you're in control yeah as a founder right? most founders when they dilute too much they become irrelevant and get kicked out of their companies in 10 years yeah. which happened to some of the names that we mentioned and then they don't get the remaining 40x because you know the real juice is when you become profitable when you list you already are established as a monopoly that is when you need to capitalize to create real generational companies so what we have created unicorns but we haven't created institutions like like uh, microsoft or google or netflix or amazon who after ipo have multiplied for 20 more years yeah. that we haven't seen and the sad part is ki maybe some of the companies will do well but mostly will not be driven by the founders and that's where founders are missing out uh, too much of short term focus yeah. i would say uh, I, I think uh, what happened is because the wealth was coming from the west and large growth rounds were happening from the west right our, our models were dictated by how west thought and unicorn was the concept were, yes uh, we was yeah. was uh, borrowed from we were we were sort of doing another round of outsourcing work <laughs> <laughs> basically <laughs> doing a custom solution to yeah. what the growth capital wanted yes. right <laughs> so founders became service providers yeah. instead of the the investors becoming service providers yeah. right founders became service providers oh you want a unicorn okay that's and how I'll engineer it because I'll engineer. these are the best <laughs> po- problem solvers in the country so true <laughs> they're intelligent people right they're smart people they sort of saying here okay i can either become a wealth creator yeah or i mean sad to use this word i can become a mercenary yeah. oh you want a unicorn i got you a unicorn yeah. okay what do i have to show i have to show 3x growth next quarter let me burn some money i'll raise some yeah. more money right so this is what they were doing that's i would say that's not entrepreneurship we talk about it yeah. right they simply saw an opportunity yeah. and provided a custom solution uh, i hope that many of these founders and newer founders now realize the folly uh, the only thing is that we don't have a lot of uh, successful role models i i agree to that point even today i was uh, debating that for example ideal only in saas in india india doesn't have a rich culture of producing 40 50 million rr saas companies role models role models and a c- yes. culture also right Absolutely. we don't talk don't about have. 40 50 million rr generally. very few right and even the few who are there like browser stack yeah. we don't celebrate them yeah. enough they the also the people don't relate to these companies yeah. in india they are not funded yeah. huh. i am a funded company so unfunded companies are not my role model yeah. it's unfair uh, and i think it much much easier for example consumer brands you know so that i saw a fashion brand called snitch uh, some 200 uh, sorry 20 crores of monthly revenue apparently fully bootstrapped the company can probably go to ipo in 3 years okay and may raise one maximum two rounds this guy will own majority of his company yeah. at ipo and uh, it's in uh, men's fashion fast fashion doing very well the only thing is that again people will not relate to this yeah. right? i think re- choosing role role models only from the tech bro culture where you say oh zoho is different zerodha is different even nike is different i will select with people <laughs> you know selectively yeah. there are hardly any role models left i think we a few people if they create wealth i think matter of time uh, when we see first five companies with 50 million arr where founders own majority of their company i think uh, this thinking will change we, we need some real wealth creation uh, role models you are right and, and it again raises the question of right a lot of funds have laid raise so much large amount of money when i go to us or other developed countries uh you know talking to lps they say how will they return this if for a fund who has raised 2 billion dollars they need to return 10 billion dollars the math let's do a math for a 500 million fund some yeah. median fund now yeah. right i mean some of my peers are sort of inching towards that number yeah. now 500 million let's say you start with 20% ownership yeah. let's say you don't dilute a lot yeah. right so let's say you are at 15% at the time of exit which right? is a very generous number 15 is a lot 15% at time of exit to do a fund returner your winner has to be worth 3 4 billion dollars right that's like a lot of muscle power in a winner it'll take a lot, a of, lot time. of pressure also yes. like like you could take money off sugar at 500 million 
yes because you had a luxury for smaller so, funds so true so and the, larger uh, equity also in that so company. the problem is that because a 1 billion dollar outcome is not enough for you you are forcing every company yeah to become 5 billion 10 billion 20 billion right whether the company or the market is ready for it or yeah. not you because that's the only thing works for you yeah. 1 billion 2 billion outcome doesn't work for you and uh, that pressure sort of also leads you to wrong selection i mean uh, for example founders who are adept at selling themselves right i mean there's a term for it very really, you know like storytelling I mean, of course yeah but you know let's focus on building also so i think then your selection because you have a pressure of building a 10 billion company you select founders who can raise the way to 10 billion yeah. you want people who can attract good people you want to grow fast so you hire certain set of mercenaries you seen some people circulating across startups right uh, because there's a pressure so a lot of fundamentals uh, you know companies become 10 billion because they have done well it's a great outcome but you have to force everyone through some of these measures and through your selection uh, that's what the problem i think uh, and hence many of these funds may not even do like uh, 2x 3x uh, i i do believe india is a great market so i will not say that it's impossible to return a 2 billion fund uh, even that will work but returns will not be as great right? i i feel that in current phase if uh, expectations are reasonable you can service a 500 million fund also uh it just won't be early stage returns uh we have a nomenclature problem here yeah <laughs> where where very large funds are calling themselves early stage funds that may not necessarily work out and because what the truth of the market is whatever vc funds return the the real uh money today back to their lps that's the global representation of india in the startup market that's the truth that is what i have found out yes last 3 months like one month in dubai and two months in the us it should be that way right i mean uh, people should be accountable for returns yes. and i think uh, we haven't done a great job of returning money we have sporadic incidents flipkart was a phenomenal outcome a uh, lot of secondary now has gone in lenskart and a few companies but uh, i feel that next 2 3 years we'll see some good ipos well priced ipos they may not return money as per original expectations but it will set the expectation of what a good outcome is right so mama earth pricing yeah. digit pricing mama earth is back to a good pricing right right now a fair pricing will give a reverse feedback to everybody as yeah. to what is the real fair expectation of exit size yeah. founders should use that anchoring to decide how much they want to dilute and how much wealth they will want for themselves yeah and how how much capital in a lifetime maybe in india you probably don't want to raise more than 50 million capital ever yeah maybe that's the magic number right maybe only in very big category like flipkart or zomato you raise more than that that's about it right yeah uh, even for sugar 40 50 maximum 100 maybe 100 is too too much for sugar yeah. to raise uh, all of this will probably become clear some of it is already becoming clear if for example paytm and zomato knew that all they will achieve is what their current market cap is then maybe they would have played it differently yeah. all the investors the late stage investors would have played it differently i think that correction will happen it hopefully will reflect on fund sizes also because the correction then will reflect, should reflect in fund sizes and i think uh, but having said that i wouldn't say that everybody who's raising a 600 million fund or 500 million fund is not aligned i think their lps should be aligned to the expectations right yeah. i think uh, there is no such in india you don't have a 500 million early stage return that's a growth return and you will get a growth return uh, you can still do 20 25% iron in india i think uh, we're doing very well as an economy many of these funds have uh, very good people a lot of institutional memory and uh, and because they've done one or two cycles of mega funds they will learn that also very well so <laughs> people have sort of not done very very well with large funds uh good people with one or two rounds of learning will will improve for yeah. sure and uh, india has seen in a 10 years horizon of time right new vc funds emerge in 2002 2003 there was icic ventures and a bunch of others in 2012 13 so you true. started prime ventures and all the folks yes. of that yes. pedigree and era india yes right and 2022 2023 right folks like us are 
starting in niche categories like only yes, b2b yes i think focus. after every uh, i'd say burst and bubble cycle yeah after every burst you will see a new crop of investors and uh, it's good creative i i like this process of kal chakra yeah so while newer funds are coming some of the previous funds are going out also right both ways uh, enough funds are either changing permanently or going out of existence uh, it's good kal chakra is important for you know the churning of yeah <laughs> uh, but overall the momentum is positive right i think uh, every kal chakra we are accreting we are adding more things and uh, that's a big positive i there was a time when i used to worry 3 4 years ago that are, do we have too many funds we have too many funds if all of them will be permanent yeah. but to your question they won't be permanent right it's okay you will see and you know sometimes as fund managers we are like oh my god this guy is already raised so much money without doing much but that's okay that's just a draw of luck in a bubble cycle yeah. but they, they do soon enough do go out right sometimes the fay we wonder oh this company doesn't deserve to be a unicorn uh, and uh, it takes 3 4 years extra but uh, after a one bus cycle they'll yeah. go out of business i think similarly vc strategies or vc teams combinations have had the same thing they look successful for a while whereas insiders wonder but then uh, eventually you know uh, they have to go through a churn uh, and they do go through a churn so it's a good good creative problem to have because if if we were like a monopoly market yeah. you know, it would be no fun yes. you know? and i think uh, it'll be difficult to fund innovation then i think it's good for founder startup ecosystem that we have good level of churn good level of uh, even within firms there is good level of churn right i think it's very positive that way i would say funds are also agile they are reinventing themselves quite smartly you know excel for example if you see yeah. there is a full new generation which has taken over right and very very nice high quality transition happening there yeah. so some funds have rediscovered themselves yeah and it's amazing right how the cycle is playing out uh right now as it we are sitting right now in a bust right now yes <laughs> <laughs> yes it is there is a cycle right now uh but you know i feel that by and large yes there were some corporate governance issues that happened uh which i i am sure all the firms will take course correction for yeah. valuation entry problem was not of indian firms indian firms were beneficiary of high valuations yeah. they were not a victim of it yeah the churn is happening in global money coming into india that's a bigger churn so the hedge funds and our usual suspects i think they will see a lot of churn that actually you know which is not bad i don't want people to raise a 50 million 100 million growth round i would rather they go to to ipo directly right yeah. so not having a lot of 100 million checks into india net net will be positive for positive everybody everybody yeah yeah i think i wouldn't regret on the contrary if they come then i would wonder what like you know maybe <laughs> maybe we we need to simply as a policy start taking exits in some of these growth rounds uh but lack of growth capital for 100 million plus actually is going to be a big positive for india as an economy i think 1 to 5 billion is a good range for ipo and uh, even half a billion out ipo yeah. founder should be solving for half a billion to 5 billion out ipo without growth capital which, which are the three to four companies that are line up for ipo in the next 12 months or 16 months in your portfolio so hopefully we'll see lending cart and sugar first uh, there is a company called okter it's a home automation they build these uh, paytm sound boxes the profitable yeah. company electronics outsourcing uh, maybe in 18 months they'll go uh a little bit later and uh, maybe in 36 months we are hoping for share chat uh there are other considerations around share chat ipo but they'll be ready to you know they have already like a 100 million plus uh, revenue run rate uh will break even in 12 months so we'll be ready but we probably might take a little longer you know more stable revenues in yeah. there uh these are the companies that i envisage right now uh but uh, already because we have a few we have sort of tasted blood already as to how good ipos can be for like some of our which ones you have tasted blood for example we tasted blood in the sense of uh, where our series b companies need to go right, right. so because i know sugar and lending card are so close 
I am already prepping Jiva Ishindra, for example. He is like very aligned. He is saying, no, no, I understood the formula now. Not going to raise a lot of capital. I will not burn a lot. I don't want to grow beyond natural profitable growth. And this is a company which is already like you know sizable revenue. And uh, they are like, no, no, we'll go for IPO. And maybe again three years, the founder is aiming for an IPO instead of uh, uh, raising successive growth yeah. capital rounds. Uh, many other companies like uh, Fleetex, for example, is saying, okay, I don't want to go abroad to justify high valuation. Yeah. I'd rather be the number one fleet automation software in India and go IPO th like that way. Hence, suddenly the way you spend your money becomes very different, right? Yeah. Because you don't want to raise a lot of capital for Indian market. Yeah. Uh, so I think, and we'll get a lot more sooner than our portfolio. We'll get feedback from some of the Companies lined up. Swiggy will be there. Uh, Digit is there. Some of those. Mama, Mama Arts, just thirty yeah. first October. They are exactly. There. So those are like even better. Yeah. Numbers, yeah. yeah. I'm looking very keenly, looking forward to that because it just gives feedback to everybody back. Yeah. They've done a very good job. They've not raised a lot of capital, so it'll be good to see uh, good wealth creation for the founders also this time. And each IPO from India, the next time you know you and I go to countries like US or Middle East or even Singapore to raise money. Oh, yes. It, 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 it's so beneficial, right? Every, I mean, every IPO. Even more important that the, these IPOs are happening in India. Yeah. Right? Domestic market, very well traded, uh, sought after. And most of these IPOs, including even, even uh, companies which didn't do very well, have come back now in public markets. They've done quite well. So the reception from domestic wealth, see, see that we have about Two billion dollars of retail money coming into stock markets every month, right? That is the exit target. That is how we should get exit, right? So much of money is coming in, yeah. looking for high growth stocks. So that should be the natural exit. So Indian markets theoretically can give 30, 40 billion of exit just from uh, retail money. Yeah. And couple with uh, institutional money, 50 billion exits we can give from public markets, right? And that's the big pool of exits. Yeah. Uh, all of us VCs and founders have to solve for that exit route. I think a, a solution, which because we back the best problem solvers, right? From IIT, yes. from all the institutions, I think uh, could be helping founders solve the one problem of 50 million ARR. Yes. 50 million ARR at 50 million capital raise. Yeah. If you do that 50 50 combination, you will not dilute a lot. Yeah. And you will reach 50 million ARR. You will hopefully be profitable by that time. And then you can list whenever you want to. Yeah. In SaaS particularly, I feel increasingly, it's happening in many businesses, there will be enough m &A opportunities also. Because like I said, in 10 years, uh, rest of the world becomes a more important m and market than just pure America. Yeah. So I think uh, we'll get good opportunities there and good wealth creation. We, we haven't seen uh, people becoming really like, you know, uh, a few level of money, right? Yeah. A few hundred million dollars. We haven't seen a lot of yes. those. We need to see some of those role yeah. models where people say, okay, this is real wealth and this is how it works. So if you see, right, I have studied these markets by being there very closely. US has 300 million of population, 40 million millionaires, dollar yes. proper millionaires yes. in the US. Yes. And it's all got, got created in the last 40, 50 years of wealth creation. Yes, wealth Both. creation through uh, IPO listed companies yes. by and large. They right? were part of companies. Some companies Both, and yeah. Uh, let's say even uh, on ground like Walmart or somebody like Facebook, yes. both the mechanism. What happened in other geographies, for example, in Middle East, there are across all countries, there are 100 families that control the entire area. True, true. It's so not distributed. The wealth creation hasn't happened. In, those areas. in India also, it was concentrated till now. This is the first time that uh, Indians can actually distribute wealth. And some companies like Flipkart have indeed yeah. distributed a lot of wealth, Paytm, Zomato, etc. Also, But I think we can do much wider distribution now. Yeah. You're right. And I think for, for now, forget employees. I'm worried about founders not creating <laughs> enough wealth yeah. for themselves. Yeah. You know, I think getting a platform and uh, getting out with a 2 million secondary exit, that's a shame. That's a shame, agree. Yeah. Secondaries, if, if IPO is possible at 50 million ARR. It is possible. I think there is serious demand. I mean, we are seeing, for example, India Mart, the revenue was around 300 crore rupees uh, at the time of uh, listing. Now they have done 3x from there and the company is probably 10x from IPO. So the, the 
revenue multiple went from 6x to yeah. i think some 20x right it's a phenomenal re-rating of the company uh public markets probably will i in india public markets are giving more premium valuation to many of these companies yes. than private markets yeah. right which is why uh, another reason for it to be lucrative and then once you list you have another 20 year run with 20% multiple so you can yeah. do a 40x after listing if you control the company yeah. and i think that way will have a lot more creation after listing also a lot more wealth creation after listing so Thank my you. my thing to sugar founders was this same we had a conversation that uh, okay you own maybe 20% of the company it's fine not too high unfortunately yeah. but how about we list today at 500 mil for example 500 million for example at 100 at, mil AR, like net run rate let's say we list at 100 million net run rate and we multiply the company 20 times sorry 20% for 20 years that's 40 times right and there yeah yeah we can do if we don't have to raise uh, don't have to justify external capital 20% we we think we can do organically yeah. without raising additional capital good no dilution yes 40x multiple in 20 years right and they're still young yeah they'll still be enjoying the fruits of their labor for next 20 years yeah and they can actually create if you can figure out the right formula for multiplying for 20 more years and then it'll be a 20 billion dollar company now and it'll be a company which would have stayed in the market for 20 years right yeah. that'll be something you know we haven't produced the equivalent of a hindustan lever or a you know asian paints or titan. bajaj finance or titan we haven't produced those kind yes. of companies uh out of startups right now yeah uh we need to see some of those yeah. then then i think real magic will happen when they become the role models and and inspirations right so thank you so much anand it's been a wonderful conversation with you absolutely learned always a lot any always a pleasure